Good morning, Judson University. How are you guys doing this morning? All right. I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm grateful for the invitation to be able to share my heart with you, just to get you uh, get to know, allow you to know me a little bit. My name is David. I live in the city of Chicago. Anybody from the city of Chicago? Anybody here? No. Nope. Okay, I got a few people. All right, so I live in the Humble Park. I live in the Humble Park community. It's a little, little about about an hour away from here. Born and raised, I am Puerto Rican. Do I have any Hispanics that are in the building? All right, I'm I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, my parents are um, born and raised in Puerto Rico, and they actually retired. They moved here, and uh, that's obviously that's how I became a Chicago citizen. And my parents retired, and they went back to Puerto Rico, and they are living there. I, I want to share just a few things about myself. I've been married for 15 years now. How many of y'all? How many of y'all can't wait till you get married? You, you can't wait. Okay. I see it in your eyes. I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm looking at you. Been married for 15 years. I got married at 21 years old. I think you guys are pretty smart. You guys can do the math and count how old I am. I got three beautiful children, three beautiful children. I got an 11-year-old, so please pray for me. She's crossing that threshold, and now she is challenging me in many ways and forms. She has just entered into that junior high stage, so this is a new season for me in my life. I got a 9-year-old boy. He is uh, in a detox season in his life from, um, um, from Fortnite. How many of you guys ever heard about that game, Fortnite? He's detoxing now because school started, and we need to make sure that he rolls back a little bit on that. And uh, I have a four, soon to be, just in a few weeks, soon to be a five-year-old daughter. And uh, she, is, she is precious to us, and she has just started her pre-K class this year, and so we're excited for her. So again, I'm just delighted to be here with you. I want to be able to share my heart with you. As I got the invitation, I had this other idea of what I wanted to share with you here today. And uh, as I was preparing, God shifted me into another direction that I believe is going to be a blessing to you. Now, I want you to know that you are in a season in your life. You are in a season in your life where there are going to be many, many, many distractions. You are in a season in your life where there are many, many different types of temptation. And I want you to understand something is that if there's Anything that you can take out of my teaching here today is that I want you to really focus in what you are rooted into. I want you to pay attention to what you are rooted into because determining what you're rooted into will determine the outcome when a storm hits your life. I want to take you and I want to give you two scriptures. And if you're wondering what, what is my title for those of you who like titles or subjects, I'll, I'm going to talk about growing deep and growing out. It is important that you grow deep, and it's also important that you grow out. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, I got some of the scriptures here on the screen. This is what it reads, and these are going to be my foundational scriptures as we talk here today. The Bible says, therefore, as you receive Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. I want you to say in. Talk to me. I want you to say in. in. As you receive Jesus Christ into your life, the Bible is teaching us and telling us we ought to walk in him. Verse 7 says, rooted and built up in him again and established in faith just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. Let's shoot over to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm going to read you verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who was alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Two will withstand him. A three-four cold cord is not quickly broken. 
I think we can all agree here today that trees are pretty important. Now, I don't know when was the last time you looked at a tree and you saw the value of a tree. As a matter of fact, trees are the most important types of plants that are in the world. The most significant reason is that it produces oxygen. So the next time you see a tree, why don't you go ahead and thank that tree that it helps you breathe. Now, in a lesser yet significant way, trees produce shade. I didn't realize the value. Have you ever not realized the value of something until you didn't have it no longer? You didn't realize the value of what you have in your hands, and then when you no longer have it, you see the significance of it. As many of you know, just about a year ago, September 20th, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. And just a few weeks following that hurricane, I took a team out to Puerto Rico to do some relief work. And the irony of all this was that just a few months before that, I was in Puerto Rico for vacation. Has anybody been in Puerto Rico before, vacationing or any types of trips? So it is a beautiful island. And I never saw myself in Puerto Rico to go on a missions trip or to do any type of relief work. And I remember as I was going to Puerto Rico and we landed in the island, how devastating the island looked. I didn't realize how important trees were at that time or even leaves on trees until I was out in the middle of the sun helping people, helping families, digging up houses and, and dirt out of the houses. It was I saw people that were literally sleeping on mattress with two and three feet of mud. They had nowhere to go. The thing about, you got to understand something about Puerto Rico. It is an island. It's not like you can just get in a car and you can drive into another location. The whole island was on a complete shutdown. There was no running water. Water bottles were, were, were coming to a complete end. So people were, were hungry. They were Thirsty, and I got to tell you that my experience in Puerto Rico, if there's anything that I learned about the people in Puerto Rico is how resilient they were, how strong will, and how they came together as a community in the most devastating time in history. I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about in the late 1890s is when there was a Hurricane 5 um, um, that, that took place in Puerto Rico. Since then, since then, that we haven't experienced anything like that. Can you consider that the power was completely out? What does that do? Hospitals, people that are sick, people that are living on life support. There are so many dynamics that took place when the hurricane hit Puerto Rico that until you didn't have it, you didn't realize the value of it. I was out in the sun, very hot. And as I looked around, the trees were bare. There was no green because everything was brown and destroyed. I didn't realize the value of the leaves on the tree the, until I couldn't hide anywhere unless I was underneath a building. There is value in so much things that you have in your hand that I don't want you to miss what you have. There is so much that you carry in your life that I want you to realize because some of us can sit back and say, have you ever ran out of paper toilet when you really need a paper toilet? It is very less significant when you don't think about it, when you have it, but when you need it, paper towels, when there is a spill. When you look at these things that you have on an everyday basis, I remember one time I used to run this college stu uh, student ministry and in this college student ministry, we had a, we had a girl that was, that was um, um, in disability. So she was in a wheelchair. And one of her things was that she wanted to stand up so bad and she wanted to praise God so bad. Little do you and I realize, for those of you who are able, that can lift up our hands or can move our feet and, and, and can speak with our mouths, little do we realize how difficult it is for someone who doesn't have it, and yet when they look across to somebody else that does have it, and yet they take it for granted. 
And there was this lady that, as, as she would watch individuals worship, she, she saw individuals not engaging in worship, and she got so frustrated that she rolled her wheelchair to me, and she says, Pastor D, she goes, can, can, I, can I talk to the team because I got something that I want to share with them? And I saw it in her eyes that she had a word for the team that she wanted to share. And she gets in front of the team and she tells these young adults and she tells them, you know what was so discouraging is the simple fact that you guys have the ability to walk and jump and praise God, but yet you're not taking advantage of what you have in your life. Many of us, we wake up in the morning and we assume that what we have is going to be given to us tomorrow. Some of us in this building, we assume that life is promised tomorrow. But when you really get down to the scripture, the Bible says that tomorrow is not promised. We play with fire and eventually I want to tell you we're going to get burned. According to some experts, there are over 100,000 different types of trees in the world. 100,000 different types of trees. One tree is called the aspen tree. I want, to, I want to show you this picture if we have it there. It is called the aspen tree. If you look at the aspen tree, it is a beautiful picture. Aspen trees grow anywhere from 20 to 80 feet tall. Here in the States, they're most seen anywhere from 5,000 to 12,000 feet elevation. Now, what's unique about the aspen tree is that it reproduces both, I want you to listen clearly now, by seeds and by root sprouts. By seeds and root sprouts. Root sprouting results in many genetically identical trees. They call this clone. Now, let me be clear. All the clone trees have identical characteristics and they share the same root structure. Are you following me? In other words, they're connected and they're all tied into that same root. They may look like they're separated. You can look at a tree that is far behind the tree that is in the center or in the front, but I want to tell you they are all somehow, some way connected. From the surface, they look like they're in different locations, but from the root, they are connected. I believe we as Christians need to operate just like the aspen tree. We might not always be in the same location, but I got to tell you, we're all connected. I want to tell everybody that is in this room, no matter where you stand in your faith, we are all connected. We are all connected. We are all adopted into the same family. It's not about what we deserve and what we don't deserve. The truth is, is that we all have been connected by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are all connected by the blood that was shed on the cross, which means that spiritually speaking, you are my brothers and you are my sisters. I believe we as Christians need to operate just like the aspen tree. I want you to follow me here. We might not always be in the same location, but we, we all have to be connected. You might not agree with your brother that is right next to you. You, you, may, not, you, may, not, you may not support necessarily their behavior or their actions, but as believers and as Christians, it is our responsibility to make sure that no matter what's going on in that individual's life, that we never give up on people. That we never give up praying for people. We never give up loving people. We might not always be on the same page, but we're connected. Our English word church comes from the Greek word meaning belonging to the Lord. The Bible explains that every Christian, every true believer in Jesus Christ is a part of the church. In other words, we're connected. We're in the same family. The Bible refers to this union of believers as the body of Christ. We're all connected to the same root. We're all connected to one another. We all share the same Father. We all share the same Savior. We all share the same Holy Spirit, which means we should reflect what we're connected to. I want to tell you that some of us were waiting for a prayer to be answered, 
And sometimes we can become very impatient. And when we look to the other side and we see that God is answering other people's prayer, you get really discouraged. Can I tell you that the same God that they serve is the same God that you serve? Which means the same father that they have is the same father that you have. I am a parent of three. And I want to share with you here today that I want all of my children to be blessed. And none of them is more valuable than the other person. I love my children all differently. They all have different needs. And as a parent, it is my responsibility to provide the very best for them. And sometimes my provision for my children is to point blank tell them no. Is to point blank tell them that they cannot have that. They cannot go there. They cannot do that. Why? Because I see beyond what they are seeing at the moment. I want to tell you that in Jeremiah, the Bible says that God has a plan for you. What does that mean? That plan is to prosper you. From the very beginning, even before God put some flesh upon those bones, I want to tell you that God created your purpose. And when he created your purpose, that means that every single step in your life has already been orchestrated and ordained by God. So my word of encouragement to you is if you are in any state of discouragement, do not let that bring you down. Because as long as you are in the right path with God, then he knows what you don't see. That's why the scripture that I told you is, listen, when you walk with Christ, make sure you walk in faith. Because faith is believing without seeing. I don't see where I'm going, but listen to me. I've got to learn to trust God enough that he knows more than I. What you're connected to will determine what feeds you. So if you're constantly connected to negativity or you're constantly uh, connected to discouragement or you're connected to people who feed you, everything that is on the negative side, I want to tell you that eventually you're going to start believing that. If I'm connected to shallow, negative, complaining, bitter type people, I will accept and become what I'm connected to. The aspen tree is connected from from the same root. And the ones that are connected are what they call clones. Are you with me? They look alike, and they carry the same characteristics. Listen, if you look like a duck, if you smell like a duck, if you act like a duck, if you quack like a duck, then you're a duck. You are what you're connected to. You can say, that's why, I need you to hear me. That's why the Bible says not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, would enter the kingdom of heaven. Because it's not about what you say, but it's about what you do that supports what you believe. Philippians chapter 2, I like the scripture. It says in 2 verses 1 and 2, it says this. So if there is any encouragement, any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any afflictions and sympathy... Complete my joy by being of the same, same, the same mind. Having the same, the same, connected to God, having the same type of love, being in full accord and one of mine. You may be sitting back and say, well, how do I forgive people? I want to tell you, it's very difficult for you to forgive people if you're trying to do it on your own. That's why if you're connected to God, he would give you the strength to be able to do the very things that you cannot do by yourself. I don't understand. I got it. I don't understand everything either. But I got to know that God knows best for me. So if God shuts a door, I got to trust it. If God opens a door, I got to trust it. Why? Because he sees the future. He sees where I'm going. He sees the end. He created the beginning. He created the middle. And he created the end. It is my responsibility to be in Christ, to continue to follow, to be connected with him so that I can be on the path that he has for me so that I can experience everything that God has in store for me. The root system in our lives has to be connected to him. And you should always be mindful of those that you allow connected to you. Good intention does not always translate to God's intentions. You have to determine who you're connected to. Because the who can have the influence to your decisions. The who can have the influence to your recovery. The who can have the influence to your healing. Can I share a personal story with you here today? Thank you. 
Who said that? I'm going to speak directly to you. 18 years ago, true story, was one of the most devastating, horrific, gut, just horrible feeling of my life. I remember my brother was coming. Uh, he, we, I, was, I was sitting. I was um, 9, turning 10 years old at the time. We're, we're talking about January 11th, 1990. And I'm sitting at my couch, and I have my uh, Michelangelo's uh, Ninja Turtle pajamas on. It was a full set. It was awesome. My, my, my dog, little, little Ralphie, little Chihuahua Taco Bell dog, was, was next to me. And my dad was sitting on the corner of, of, the, uh, of the couch, possibly watching the Cubs game. I don't know. He's a diehard Cubs fan, and he, and he blessed me with that. And I remember as I, my brother, he walks in. At the time, my brother's 18 years old, and he walks through the living room, and he says, hey, Pop, I'm about to head out. I'll be back in a little while. He leaves the door. Sometime later, I see my, my dad gets a phone call, and, and he storms out of the house. As my dad stormed out of the house, I remember watching my mom, and I'm, you know, nine, nine years old. That This is the age of, of where my son is at. And as I... As I as I'm looking at my mom, my mom is just pacing back and forth. And my mom doesn't know absolutely nothing, but she feels something, that's hap something wrong happened. And she's pacing back and forth. And I remember my mom just looking out the window, just looking, just looking, just looking. And pacing back and forth and just really concerned of what, uh, what took place. And, and my, dad, my dad comes through the doors. And, and, and some of my family members, they, co they come through the doors. And they tell, they tell my mom, at the time, they tell my mom, y your son, Nachito, has been shot. Has been shot. I didn't understand it. I, I just saw my mom at the moment. She just, her knees buckled and she, she falls, uh, she falls to the ground and they try to pick her up and they take her over and they try to, you know, they try to soothe her as much as possible. And my mom is distraught and she's, she's, she's broken in pieces. And my dad, my dad is just, just, just being the, the, the pillar of the home and just trying to be strong. And, and uh, I, I, if we can fast forward for a moment, we, we, we found out that my brother, one bullet took my brother's life. He was shot and killed from another teenager that was initiating himself to join a gang, we find out later that this individual knew who my brother was. And when he find out that he killed my brother, he turned himself in and he, and he, uh, he did time. I, I share that story with you because sometimes there are people that will look at me and they say, well, look at this guy. He's got a mic in his, I was going to say in his hand, but he, he's, he, he's, got a, he's got a lavalier mic that he's talking to. He's on the stage and uh, he looks healthy, he looks strong. He's got a beautiful family. He's got beautiful kids. But many of us, what we do is that we all automatically have a perspective of a person based on where they're at in their life. But if there's anything that is universal that is in this room is the simple fact that we are all we all can relate with one thing, and that is pain. If there's one thing that you may be dealing with in your life, it may not be what I have dealt with in my life, but what we can come into an agreement is like, man, pain, pain doesn't feel good. It was such a tragic situation in our lives that we didn't know how to bounce off. And can I tell you, when we talk about getting connected, how do we sustain the storm? How do we get through what we went through? How did we overcome? It's very simple for me, y'all. There's two different ways that we were able to do it. My dad was a pastor of a church. Can you imagine? Have you ever asked yourself? Have you ever looked around and said, how can this happen? My dad was a good man. He loved God. He would preach every single Sundays. My dad was faithful. How can this happen to him? How can this happen to my mother? My, I remember going to the funeral home and in the middle of the street, my mom is about to collapse because she was just so overwhelmed and burdened with the pain. How can you get through such tragedy that is in your life? See, some of us in this building, you are sitting to next somebody and maybe you know them, but you really don't know them. You don't know what they're feeling in the inside. You don't know what they're going through in their life. You don't know the pain that they've endured. You don't know the lifestyle that they've had to come out of. They look good. They dress good. They smell good. And at the end of the day, you are only looking at the appearance, but what you can't see is what's happening in the inside. They are broken in the inside. They are shattered in the inside. Little do you realize, if you look at anybody in this world, when they act out, the reason that they're acting out is because it is a reflective of the pain that is happening in the inside. Behaviors begin to come out because they're so broken on the inside. 
We were broken on the inside. So much bitterness and so much uh, shame and so much guilt and feeling all of whatever you can feel. And, and, I, and I, I had to come to a place and ask myself, how do we do this? One, we did this because we were rooted in God. I tell you, when you face us tragedy, and that's not the only tragedy that is in my life, but that's the only one that I will tell you. When you face us tragedy, it's only God that can get you through it. And I just said it, it's only God that can get you through it. I would always remember what happened to my brother, and to this day I want to tell you, I am at peace. I want to tell you that in this day that I can look at the murderer in the eyes and I pray to God and I've always said this, God, give me an opportunity to meet him, not so that I can slap him, not so that I can body slam him, not so that I can spit at his face, but so that I can tell him, I forgive you. It did not happen overnight. It did not happen in a week or in a month. I want to tell you, it took years of healing. It took years of crying and years at the feet of God, allowing God. See, I, you know what I love about God is that God would give you the space as long as you are in his presence. What God does not want you to do is to air out all of your laundry in public so that you can have people feel sorry about you. Or so that you can begin to create a pity party and so, so that they, 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 they can be a part, of your, a part of your club. God wants you to be in his presence, rooted in him. And I promise you, I guarantee you, that if you're rooted in God, he will get you through. Here's the second thing that God did. The second thing that God did was that he helped by surrounding us with really good people that love God to be with us in the most tragic times of our lives. I don't know how more to say this, but I want to encourage somebody that is in this room. Sometimes you've got to change your environment if you really want to heal. you, you got to change the people that are around you if you really want to heal. I've come to this place not because I'm holier than thou. I've come to this place because I've made peace with God. It wasn't easy, and it was been a trial. 18 plus years later, I want to tell you, we still cry. January 11th, we still cry. Just a few years ago, my sister, my oldest sister, she, she FaceTimed me, and, and uh, the first thing that, you know, I, there were six of us, there's four, four girls, and, and, and me and my brother. My brother passes away, so you can imagine I'm the baby. And at the end of the day, they look at, uh, she looks at me and she just begins to weep and begins to cry. See, the pain doesn't go away. But I want to tell you that it is possible to move on and heal. Pain has a way of separating you, but love has a way of reconnecting you. And this is exactly what God does. God loves to reconnect people to everything that he owns. I want to tell you that everything that God has in heaven, some of us, we're waiting for heaven to happen. But the Bible is clear that you can experience all heaven here on earth. Why am I going to wait to go to heaven to experience what God has in store? If you want peace, you can't get it in money. You can't get it in success. Can I tell you, you're not going to get it in a degree. Everything that we gain here on earth, hey, listen, I say go after it. But if you're looking for an everlasting an everlasting experience, you're only going to get it through Jesus Christ. I want you to stand to your feet for a moment. I want to show you this last picture. I have, uh, my mom has a green thumb. She has a green thumb. And she's always taught us about um, planting and gardening. And I didn't know this until I did some research. I didn't know this until I did some research. Have you, ever, have you ever bought a plant or your parents bought a plant and you took it out and you put it inside a vase and this is what you saw? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know this. But what you see here is the root. And what's happening is that when, before you buy it, you don't know how long that plant has been inside that, that vase. And this is the result of the plant being inside the vase because... Roots were never intended to grow in. Roots were always intended to grow out. This right here, what you see is that the root is literally strangling itself. 
And the reason that it's yellow that way is because it is dehydrated. And every time it's trying to seek for water, it goes deeper into itself. See, some of us here today, what you have to do is in order to get these roots from strangling itself, is that one by one, you got to literally pull out the roots. And I want to tell you that any type of healing or any type of process or any type of place that you're at, you're going to have to, one by one, start taking out the roots that were not intended to come into you. Why? Because it will strangle you and it will choke you. But God is here to tell you, listen, it may take some time to heal or it may take some time to recover. Just like Puerto Rico, one year, literally the lights just came on in Puerto Rico. My parents were there in the Hurricane 4, close to 3,000, some say close to 4,000 people died at this hurricane. If you want to be able to breathe again and you want to live again, I want to tell you, you only can do it if you grow deep in him. You can't allow the root system to choke you. Bow your heads and close your eyes as I dismiss you here in a few seconds in prayer. But if there's anybody in this room and you're saying, man, I, I, just, I just want to grow deeper in God. I, I, I probably missed it. I probably overlooked it. Uh, keep every eyes closed. It's none of your business. If this is not for you, no problem. But, but maybe there's decisions that you need to make in your life and you want to reconnect yourself with God. You want to not feel suffocated or strangled, would you lift up your hands right, you're, right where you're at and say, that's, that's me. I, I, I want to answer. I see your hands. Don't be afraid. This is the greatest decision you can make. I'll be the first one to tell you, man, I need to grow deeper in God. Because if I'm going to sustain the storm, then I need God to help me to get through the storm. Everybody who's lifted up their hands, let me pray for you for a moment. Father, I just pause for a moment. I, I pray for every man and every woman that lift up their hands and they are making a covenant commitment to you. Lord, sometimes we don't have the answer, but you do. We just pray, God, right now that you will speak deep. We pray right now, Lord, that whatever is strangling them and whatever is suffocating them, God, that they would be able to be ordered and stead by your Holy Spirit to do what they need to do. Surround them with good people to help them in their journey with Christ. And I ask, Lord, that you would remove all the junk that is in the inside that sometimes holds us back. We're grateful for your salvation. We're grateful, Lord, that we don't earn it, but yet you love us enough to give it to us. Would the rest of you just do me a favor? Would you lift up your hands as I, as I bless you out throughout the rest of your day? This is a prayer in the book of Exodus. Moses did this, and I want to bless you as you go throughout your day. Again, I thank you for allowing me to speak to your life here today. I pray that it was a blessing, and I pray that you would walk out challenged. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord guide you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord give you strength. And may the Lord give you the anointing you need to get through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you.